Hi, Miss Bello. This is Brian Henson with BMW of Gwinnett Place. I'm going to go over some of the features and functions of your 2020 BMW X4. And to do that, I'm going to use a few different vehicles so that I can make sure to cover all the different features and functions that your specific vehicle has. As you probably know, part of the comfort access feature allows you to walk up to the car with a key fob in your pocket or bag and simply grab the handle that will unlock the vehicle if it's just from the driver's door it'll just unlock the driver's door if you were to do this from a rear door unlock all the doors there are ways to change those settings as well now if we want to lock the vehicle we simply come over here make sure the door is closed and then we're going to touch the ridges that are that are right there and once the ridges are touched the vehicle locks another feature or part of the comfort access package is the kick to open kick to close feature so you simply uh, walk behind the vehicle with a key in fob in your pocket or bag and do swiftly kick right underneath the vehicle uh, in the center you'll see the lights blink uh, to give you confirmation that your command has been received and then the trunk will open uh, i can also close the vehicle the same way and keep in mind it's a swift kick if i hold my foot under here it's not going to work but if i uh swiftly kick right underneath the center of the vehicle i'll do that one more time swift kick then i get the confirmation and i get an audio beep uh, and then the vehicle closes i can also uh use this back here uh, to open the vehicle uh, and of course i can use the key fob to open it I can close the vehicle using this button, but I can't use the key fob button to close the tailgate. On the driver's door armrest, there is a button that allows you to open the tailgate from inside the car. So you simply uh, press down on this top button here. Uh, pressing down will open the tailgate. But if I want to close the tailgate, I need to actually pull that button so I would pull it up but if I was to let go mid uh, midway you notice that the tailgate stays open uh, it stops closing at that point so I need to continue pulling up until I hear the thud of the tailgate closing of course the uh, other button is the uh, pad that allows you to change the tilt of the side mirrors this uh, is the pad this lets you use the left mirror this lets you adjust the right mirror if it's in this position um, and you have the vehicle in reverse the side mirror will not tilt down but if it's in the left hand position if I come over here put it in the left hand position take a look at my side mirror and then put the vehicle in reverse you'll notice that the mirror does tilt down that allows me to see uh, white lines in the parking lot or a curb that I'm next to but if I don't want that mirror to tilt down and I'm in reverse I would switch that uh, this switch back to the right and then you'll notice that the mirror tilts back up so it really depends on what kind of reversing situation you're in, whether you're leaving your parking space or maybe you're just take, uh, leaving your garage. Here's your lighting dial. Uh, you can see right now it's in the automatic low beam setting. So I can switch it over here if I wanna force the headlamps off. This would be parking lights with no headlamps. This would be automatic headlamps this would force my headlamps on um, and then if I wanted to uh, activate my high beams I would use the turn signal here I would push forward uh, on the turn signal and you notice that uh, my high beams come on and then I pull back to uh, turn the high beams off at any point I'm gonna put this back into um, automatic mode at any point if I wanted to flash my high beams I could simply uh, pull them uh, towards me now if you wanted fog lights on 
you simply press this button, um, fog lights will come on and you, that symbol is actually on the right hand side of the instrument panel. If I turn the fog lights on, the, uh, hot, the low beams are going to come on as well. Um, and then um, I can turn the fog lamps off. On the left hand side of the steering wheel there are cruise control options. Uh, this activates or deactivates cruise control. You can change uh, speed up or down instead of using your uh, gas pedal and brake. Uh, of course there's the resume and cancel and then the set button. The right hand side of the steering wheel uh, is for multimedia. Uh, so uh, volume control up and down uh, menu for your head up display allows you to see different uh, music sources in the head up display. Um, for instance, if I press that menu button, I can see a list here and then I can use this thumb wheel to rotate up and down and that will allow me to go up and down through the list and then I can actually press the thumb wheel and to uh, select a music source and then once I'm in there I can also rotate through to select stations or I could use this button uh, to uh, go to the next station up etc so one quick way to uh, mute the volume is to press the uh, volume button that'll quickly mute it the other buttons on the uh, uh, side right hand side of the steering wheel are the phone button this allows you to answer a phone call or to take uh, end a phone call and then this button right here has two functions one is to uh, speak to the BMW personal assistant which uh, will show up here. And then I can press one more time to cancel if I like. The other is to uh, pull up Siri if I have my phone connected via Apple CarPlay. If I hold this button down a little longer, Siri will pop up. On the control display. To listen to music sources, I have many ways to do the same thing. Of course, I have a, what we call widgets on this screen right here. There are three of them on this, on this screen. I could press the the widget right here to expand it. I can change the sound settings uh, right here. Um, I can uh, rotate through here, but it's a lot easier to uh, use the iDrive controller to, to spin through here, and I can spin really quickly if I want to. If I wanted to see more uh, sources, uh, this is Sirius XM satellite radio, uh, which you have a subscription to. It's a free trial for 12 months and it also includes uh, the app uh, which is a part of the all access package so you have every channel that you can listen to and if you download the Sirius XM app you can also stream satellite music uh, on your phone away from the vehicle so from here I could uh, if I wanted to see what my other music sources are I could I could tilt the controller uh, to the left and then that would take me uh, to expand the part on the side. I'm going to tilt it to the right again. Um, you can also, using my finger, I could touch and expand that and then close it this way. Or I could press the media button. If I press the media button, it'll open up that side panel. So uh, anytime I'm going to press the menu button to go home, if I was to press the media button right now, it would take me to the last source I was listening to. And if I press the media button again, it would open up that side panel. And from here, I can choose all these different uh, options. Um, if I want to add presets, I can simply do that over here on the side. First, I have to make sure that I'm on the station. You can see by the sound uh, waves right there that I'm on the station I want. If I went to uh, the next station, which is three, I'd have to press down on the controller to select it. Now I'm on station three, and if I wanted to, I can tilt the controller to the right, select add presets, and then it's saved it to a preset list. Now that preset list, if I pressed media, and then press media again, I would see that preset list up at the top. I can select that and then I'd see my presets over here. I can mix and match presets. They don't have to all be satellite. They could be FM and AM as well. There are two things that I do right away. Uh, one is to uh, touch the time at the very top of the display in the top right. 
and then it allows me to choose automatic time setting and uh, that will adjust for daylight saving time and for any time zone changes and then I'm going to go back to the home screen I'm going to select maps and then from there I can toggle using this icon on the bottom I can toggle through different views uh, and you can see there are three of them the first one uh, my car moves around but the map stays so that the it's always facing north I find that kind of difficult to follow so most maps uh, look like either this which is perspective your car is always going straight ahead and the map moves around and then the other one which is two-dimensional uh, also uh, your car facing the direction of travel and then you have other options over to the side you'll notice if I push my finger up here uh, things appear or if I touch things appear and then they'll go away after a while change the color of the ambient lighting in the vehicle again you go to settings so I'm going to use the iDrive controller to rotate to car and then settings and then I'm going to rotate over to interior lighting and then I have ambient lighting and you'll notice that if I choose a color uh, then I can rotate through the entire list and as I rotate over here on the right hand side it gives me a preview of what it's going to look like uh, when I make the change and then once I make the change, um, I can select it, I can tilt back to the left, and then I can change the brightness if I want to. Gesture controls allow you yet another way to interact with the vehicle. So there is a uh, sensor that's located up here. It's uh, this black sensor right here, and it's gonna look down so that your hands are kind of in front of the display screen and kind of above the gear shift. So you'll notice that if I do a two finger point like so, it will mute the radio. And if I do it again, it'll unmute it. Now I can use my finger in a clockwise motion to increase the volume and decrease the volume and then mute it if I want to. I can change stations uh, this way as well. If I go to the right, uh, that went up a station. If I do a thumb to the left, it went down a station. If you'd like to see all the gesture controls available, simply go to car and then scroll down to owner's manual. And then from here, you can do a keyword search. If I raise my hand up to here, uh, my finger up to here, I've get a keyboard. And so I'm gonna type in gestures and uh, Right over here, I've got BMW gesture control. I'll select that. And then I can select uh, possible gestures if I'd like to get straight to it. And then just rotate through here. The only thing I'll mention about the uh, index finger forward and backward, uh, it does not accept calls uh, when you're using CarPlay. But if you're using the BMW iDrive for your calls, it would. So these are just different, uh, all the different options available. And then the, uh, if I tilt back to the left uh, and keep tilting just to show you that this is a fantastic way to learn more about the vehicle. The owner's manual gives you uh, a lot of different options, including uh, videos um, that you can see while your car is not in motion. And uh, it's very helpful. For these controls, you have garage door opener buttons that are programmable, one, two, three right here. Uh, you have the SOS button, which is very important. That's located up at the top. If I need to talk to a, a BMW assist agent, I just uh, open that cover and then press the SOS button. And I, I suggest that you do that if you haven't already, just to test it out and you'll talk to a, a BMW assist agent and they'll let you know what vehicle you have and uh, where you're located and then ask you if you have any questions. So when you're not using it, you can press that down. Uh, the phone call uh, will come through the computer system and not through your phone. And uh, it will, uh, uh, all the information will appear right here on the control uh, panel. So if you need to operate the lights, those are all the lights in the cabin. Uh, and then you have individual reading lights on the left and the right. And then you have the controls here for the panoramic moonroof. Uh, which you can adjust this way and then um, I can press it back 
Uh, and if I press it really far, then uh, you'll feel it click twice and then it'll close on its own without me having to hold it. If I, uh, if I don't go very far, I have to keep holding it to make it go. If I press the button right here in the middle, uh, it actually vents. And then if I press it again, it closes. For climate control, these are the uh, opening and closing dials for your vent. This one is uh, closed and then I can move it over to the open position. Controls are located down here. Right here I have uh, my temperature control. It's on auto, so the computer chooses what vents to use and uh, also can adjust the intensity here. But if I want to uh, adjust intensity manually, I can do it this way. If I wanted to uh, take the vehicle out of auto, I would select here uh, or press the auto button. And then from here, I'm choosing what vents. That's the center vent. That's all three vents. Uh, that's a center and bottom vent. Uh, that's the bottom vent. And then that's the top and the bottom vent. And then that's the top vent. And then top and middle. And then middle only. So if I want the computer to do all that work for me, I'm just going to select auto and then it does. Uh, now you have separate uh, temperature control for your passenger. And they can adjust this. But if they were to leave the vehicle and you wanted to be in control again, you would simply press the sync button and then you'll notice that everything you do affects the entire vehicle. Now, if they were to uh, move it, it takes it off of sync, uh, but you can uh, press that again to regain control. Uh, if you get in the car and it's really hot, this may be helpful. The max AC button is gonna drop it out of auto down to the lowest possible temperature and the highest intensity. Your front defrost is here, your rear defrost is here, and your heated seats are here. That's uh, the highest level, uh, that's medium, that is low, and that is off. Your heated steering wheel button is uh, located conveniently right in the front here. If I select that button, it tells me on the instrument cluster that the uh, steering wheel heating has been activated. If I press that again, it says it's been deactivated. So this is your instrument panel. Uh, there's a lot of good information here. And if you wanna change the type of information you see on the right hand side, you do that by pressing the button that's on the side of the, or the tip of the turn signal. So every time I press this BC button, I'll see different information on the right hand side of the vehicle. That's fuel economy information. That's uh, mileage information. That's horsepower and torque meters. That's what I'm listening to. And that's what gear I'm in and what drive mode I'm in. The drive modes are uh, are located down here. Uh, you've got the Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. Eco Pro is helpful if you're in the city and you wanna save some fuel. It is not effective on the expressway, but uh, it does make things a little bit, uh, drive it, it does make the car drive more conservatively if you wanna have a more exciting drive then you could uh, press the sport button uh, but uh, comfort is the balanced mode and that's what you will be in when you start the car uh, and you can also get a confirmation of it there if I change out of that mode it, it also uh, moves down to this this bottom part right here so you can still see that you notice it says ramp uh, but the map is turned off there's actually a map that I can turn on uh, on the center of the display, the ramp is telling me what street is nearby, and that's the uh, expressway ramp. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm going to uh, choose um, car. This is where you'll change most of the settings for the vehicle. I'm gonna use the iDrive controller right now, just to rotate through. And uh, I'm gonna choose settings, and then I'm gonna choose displays. I'm gonna go over here, and you can see there's a lot of things to choose. Uh, if I choose displays, I'm going to choose instrument panel. And then from there, central display area is off. If I turn that to map view, then I'll see a map appear in the center. And then that's going to be a very simple uh, black and white map that, uh, that helps me orient myself. And uh, it's non-obtrusive, but I think it's uh, useful. 
So if you want that off, or um, you can simply turn it off. If you only wanted a root preview, you can do that as well. So I can tilt this to the left. The other thing that's nice to, to change here is uh, the head-up display. Um, if I want to select the height of the head-up display, I'd rotate here, and then I would uh, push down. That allows it to uh, become larger that icon and then I can rotate my controller and then I can change the height. If I sit back in the seat, I'll have a rectangle here and that will uh, adjust higher or lower and it'll help me um, decide where I want to put the head up display. And then once I have it where I like it, I can uh, simply press down on the controller and then it's saved in that position. And then I can tilt left or if I want, I can simply press the uh, menu button and then I'll back to the home screen. Your vehicle's equipped with uh, auto rain sensing wipers. And uh, right here uh, is the instructions, uh, are the instructions. Uh, if I press down once, the windows uh, swipe once. If I uh, press it up once, you'll notice that this turns green and then it's an auto uh, rain sensing mode. And then uh, I can adjust uh, the maximum speed and I have it on fast here. It acts like an intermittent wiper. Uh, if it's raining really hard, it will go faster. If it's not so hard, it'll go slow, but this will, uh, this will uh, make the maximum speed slow. So I can adjust that however I like. And then if I want to take it out of automatic and put it into a manual mode, I push up one more time for low and then um, one more time for high and then um, back down to low and then back down to auto and then now this is green and lit up. I can leave it in auto, that's probably the best idea. Uh, if I wanna do the rear wiper, I gently twist this to on. If I twist it anymore, it's gonna wash the rear window. So uh, that puts it in the off position. And then if I wanna uh, rinse the front windshield, I'll just pull this back towards me. I'm gonna quickly cover seating controls. So right here, you have the obvious uh, forward and back uh, control, but I can lift it to go higher and I can push down and go lower, but I can also twist it and that changes the seat angle of the bottom. So I can also uh, recline using that. And then I can use this to adjust the um, lumbar support. So this is gonna push out against your lower back if I press higher, it'll move up your lower back. If I press lower, it'll go down your back and then this will release it. Now this button right here is going to squeeze those side bolsters, these right here, and kind of keep you firmly in place. If I press towards the front of the vehicle, that squeezes and gives you a hug. If I press towards the rear of the vehicle, that releases. And then the last one is the uh, in front here. You've got the, this lever that allows you to extend it. If you have long legs, it might be more comfortable. And then you can press back. And then uh, the other seating control I'd mention is back here. Right down here, this will allow you, when you pull it, to change the uh, recline angle of the seat. And if you want to lay the seat down, you can simply pull back here and then the, the seat will lay down. If someone tall is sitting in the uh, middle, then you can uh, lift this or tilt it so that it gives them uh, a headrest, uh, which is a safety feature. And then uh, you can simply press it to uh, lean it back so you have a better view out, out of the, in the mirror for the rear. From the trunk, this is yet one more way uh, to release this seat lever and allow the seats to lay down. If you needed to uh, remove this, panel right here you can just simply uh, pop it out and um, it will go uh, back down when you need it if you just pop it back into place when it's when it's lined up so that wraps up our uh, features and functions review of the x4 if you have any additional questions please don't hesitate to uh, reach out and let me know uh, via text or email or phone i hope you enjoy your 2020 bmw x4 for many years to come. Take care.